And welcome back to Impact Pasadena. I'm honored and delighted to have Jennifer Duvall here from the Pasadena Community Foundation. She is president and CEO of the foundation and has been there for 15 years and overseen a growth of what is now $80 million in assets in the foundation. And in the previous segment, we were talking about what a community foundation is and how the Pasadena Community Foundation was founded um, and how you have a network of, of donors and grantees that you work with uh, and also in partnership with the city and other, other uh, community partners. Um, I know that you are working in several different areas and which is part of your mission. And we talked a little bit in the last segment about education and how you're uh, working with PUSD to to uh, supplement some of the programs that they have and increase student success. But I also wanted to talk about the human services area because there's a lot of needs in Pasadena uh, that uh, can't be met fully by, by government or by traditional charities, for example. Um, what are some of the examples of, of human services work that you do for the foundation? Sure. So. Um Human service is very broad. Mm -hmm. it, it includes, um, you know, organizations that serve the homeless. It includes organizations that serving disabled populations, foster youth, broad array of sort of um, safety net organizations. Yeah. We have an interesting partnership uh, with the city of Pasadena. Several years ago, um, the city approached us. They had an endowment fund that had been. Uh, given to them through a couple of different resources, but um, they actually approached us to take that over for them. As um, city government cannot invest in the mm -hmm. stock market, they can only invest in you know, sort of like, you know, yeah. cash and bonds. And so they had an endowment that they saw was sort of dwindling down over time. They were making grants, but they really weren't keeping up um, you know, with the growth side of it. So they actually gave us a $1.7 million uh, endowment and we created the Pasadena Assistance Fund. And that fund is now uh, valued at $2.3 million. Mm -hmm. So we've been able to sort of grow the endowment. And we work with the Human Services Commission who acts as sort of the advisory body mm -hmm. and they read applications and decide on who the recipients will, will be. Mm -hmm. um, of this Pasadena Assistance Fund, which is focused on helping uh, people who need, you know, kind of a hand up, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and and a way to improve their lives and rebuild their lives, and so that's that's been a great partnership where we do sort of the investments and the. Um, uh, we do the site visits, we read the grant reports, we do the check writing, but the City Human Services Commission is really sort of the advisory body that is selecting the organizations. So what, what are some examples of some of those organizations and their activities uh, in the area of homelessness, for example, or the safety net sure. issues that you talk um, about? Well, for example, one of the grants went to the Armory Center for the Arts, mm -hmm. which has um, a program for teens, at uh, sort of a, a program located at the Pinteresca Library mm -hmm. site to help teens um, who are curious about maybe a career in graphic design um, or, you know, the arts in general, and, you know, getting kids to focus on something that they're really passionate about and interested in them can really help them do better in school and Absolutely. stay engaged in school and things like that. At a critical time in their um, lives. Yeah, actually PCC was a recipient of a grant um, for a program that worked with the foster youth that were you know, emancipated transitional age youth that were at PCC and needed a bit of, you know, support and so forth. So that was a program that was right. funded through the Pasadena Assistance Fund. Okay, great. And I know you work with seniors too. I mean, you work with organizations that support seniors. Uh, what are some we of We do. Them? And, um, you know, several years ago, we had been making senior grants for many years. And several years ago, we sort of asked ourselves, are we really doing the most impactful thing that we can yeah. be doing? So we actually sunset the grants program for a year and we formed a task force and we went out and we spoke to uh, some of the providers, some of the nonprofits who serve seniors and we looked at research that was available through the public health department and through um, Huntington Hospital sort of community assessment mm -hmm. and we really tried to under identify what are the most significant needs of seniors mm -hmm. and we identified a food insecurity 
uh, as a huge need among seniors. And um, so as a result of that, we sort of, that was one of the needs that we identified. But as a result of that process, we rewrote our guidelines and now we focus very much on the frail elderly mm -hmm. and low income seniors in a couple of areas including f food uh, insecurity and caregiver support. So people living with somebody who has dementia yeah. and just the, the that's a tough situation. Uh, if, if an 80 year old's taking care of an 85 year old, that's, that's hard on everybody. Yep. Um, so we now fund programs like Meals on Wheels, um, the, f the food program at the Pasadena Senior Center, mm -hmm. Um, Foothill Unity has a grocery delivery program for low-income seniors. Okay. So we, you know, we really Well, you know what, you bring up an interesting point, which is the site visits, the research, the data, you know, it's so important to give you, and I, I think it's wonderful that you actually took a year off and revised a grant, uh, because uh, so that you could really establish metrics for this for your yeah. success there uh, because you know you, you don't want to just throw money after money uh, at things you want to really know where, what's uh, and I think that from your donor point of view you, 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 they would expect you to be able to yeah, have the most I, you know, impact we want to have um, you know be impactful with every dollar yeah. and uh, there's certainly you know we're not the Gates Foundation yeah. but but we take the, our grant making very seriously, and we yeah. do try to be impactful. There's a, there's another great story that I love, sort of in the in the human services area. There mm -hmm. were two da two women. Their mother died, and she had been very active at her church, and she was known as the cookie lady, and mm -hmm. she would sell cookies after the service to raise money to help you know the homeless and the hungry, and um, her daughter would occasionally go with her to present a check to uh, you know a food bank or mm -hmm. a food pantry and so when she died the two daughters um, each took five thousand dollars and they created an endowment to honor their mother called the Nancy Nash endowment for hunger and mm -hmm. homeless and um, the sisters sort of made a pact with each other and with their other family members and they said you know for every holiday birthday Christmas whatever celebration you know, we don't want stuff. We just want people to make a donation to that fund. Yeah. And that's really what we want. And so that fund is now worth over $40,000 wow. through a combination of our investment returns and their additional donations. And they allow us to have discretion over the grant making. So we've made grants to um, Friends Indeed, which runs a food pantry, um, and they run the Bad Weather Shelter, mm -hmm. which is a place where homeless people can go in the rain or cold winter months to get out of the yeah. um, outdoors. And uh, certainly Union Station and Elizabeth House, which runs a, a program for homeless pregnant women. Yeah, yeah. So I could make, I could create a foundation for $10,000 if I wanted to? You or? can. You can wow. become one of our endowment builders. We now wow. have 116. See, that's another thing that people <laughs> probably don't understand is you don't, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to have a million dollars to endow. Yeah. You could endow with And less. of course, that's um, under that program. Again, you know, PCF's making the decisions about the grant making. Mm -hmm. But we also work with people um, you know, we, we are working with, a, we worked with a woman who had a condominium uh -huh. that she had owned for many years. She had bought it for $40,000. It was valued at a million dollars. If she sold it, she would have to pay the gap gain on that. Mm -hmm. So she actually gifted the condominium to mm -hmm. PCF. Yeah. We sold it. Mm -hmm. We placed the million dollar net proceeds into her donor advised kind of family foundation fund. Uh -huh. And her goal was to give away $100,000 a year for 10 years and just spend the money down. Mm -hmm. And so we worked with her for um, those many years to, uh, you know, give mostly locally, but she gave to wherever she wanted. It could have been outside mm -hmm. the Pasadena as well. Mm -hmm. And so we're helping her to kind of turn that, you know, condo into sort of a charitable checkbook yeah. that, um, that can be used for many organizations, not just, I mean, she could have given the condo to her college, and yeah. but all the money would have gone to the college. And right, sure. not that she didn't support her college, but this way sure. she was able to turn that gift into sort of the support Directive. of many, many yeah. organizations. So we were sort of a vehicle for that. Yeah. Well, I know that the safety net uh, work you do is very important, but there's another aspect to it too, which is the the, the sort of culture of our community. So I know that arts and, and culture are another uh, charge that you have. Um, how do you 
how do you evaluate those grants and what are you looking, what's your goal in terms of arts? So um, long, so long term, we have a goal of having sort of um, an endowment for each of our six areas of interest, mm -hmm. you know, every from hearts, health, human services, environment, education, youth. Um, and we're, we're sort of growing funds. To the, um, so people who have a passion in art might start a $10,000 endowment, somebody else might start a $100,000 endowment, and all those endowments for the arts get sort of pooled to, to make grants. Mm -hmm. At the moment, our grant making to the arts community is still primarily capital equipment grants. Yeah. So we, you know, by, we helped the um, Pasadena Playhouse buy ticketing software. Um, we bought music stands for the symphony. Mm -hmm. um, so we've provided you know, a lot of capital equipment support. Um, long term, I think we see ourselves probably supporting um, arts education mm -hmm. and probably you know, diversity and access to the arts, I think is sort of maybe more our role um, in terms of funding cultural organizations. Yeah. So we do, even if we make a capital equipment grant, we do evaluate whether that organization has education programs, yeah. community outreach, right. free days, yeah. um, whether they're really giving back within the community. That's one of yeah, our criteria. Yeah, it's interesting. I've been involved in the arts a lot, and, and I know in the theater world, for example, it's very easy to get people to, um, not easy, but it's, it's, it's for, frequently people will do have a naming opportunity, so they will, build a building uh, or a name for a facility in, a, in an arts complex. Uh, but the thing about the arts is that there's a lot of maintenance expenses mm -hmm. in terms of upkeep and um, salaries and all those other things. And that's the hard thing for, mm -hmm. for this. Now, the ticketing software that you do and also the audience education, arts education support is really important because it builds audiences, which bring in the view, uh, viewership and patrons, and that sort of accelerates the, the, the support that they need. Right. But I know that the arts is a very tough area uh, for funding, and again, it sounds like you're kind of giving giving them a boost, perhaps. Yeah, and we, you know, we don't because we are the Pasadena Community Foundation. We um, we really understand that what makes Pasadena this amazing place mm -hmm. to you know live and work and play is that we have these rich cultural organizations. We have a beautiful urban forest. We have um, you know strong education institutions. Um, and so it's, it's all of that that makes mm -hmm. Pasadena great. And we, we are very determined to make sure that we support that breadth of, of what makes this place a wonderful place to be. Yeah, I, I wonder, because you, you touched on the, um, your partnerships with the city, what are some other areas you think you might develop there uh, with it? I know that Pasadena, I know that the city um, needs to have a private partner, private public partnerships. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a larger issue too of there's a there's I know there's a certain political debate in the country about how much the government should be providing all these services and how much private individuals can. Uh, and I, I think I don't think it's it's uh, either or. You know, I think that the kind of partnership that you're describing, where you have public-private partnerships, where they can kind of help each other. Um, so I'm sure this is a conversation you have with the city back and forth. Well, I think um, you're right. I don't think philanthropy is ever going to substitute no. uh, governmental money. Um, but I think it can enhance it. Um, I think a good example, uh, there was an organization, a nonprofit that was formed in the 80s. Um, at that time, the city had had some financial challenges and the beautiful central branch of the library was essentially falling apart. Mm -hmm. There was a group of people that got together and formed a nonprofit to raise money to really um, work with the city to refurbish the library, and they were successful yeah. in doing that. Yeah. And they had a little bit of money left over um, that they chose to uh, in, invest, um, funny enough, in all bonds, which at the time was an okay decision. Yeah. Um, not so much now. <laughs> but. Uh, and they continue to fundraise modestly. And so a few years ago, maybe back in 2010, um, it, for a lot of reasons, it made sense to, to dissolve that organization and move that money under the 
Pasadena Community Foundation umbrella. Mm -hmm. And so now, what was a, they gave us about $1.1 million. It's now worth about $1.3 million. Mm -hmm. And we just matched the city funding mm -hmm. to restore the walnut facade, to do some work on that beautiful facade of the, of the central branch. And so we gave 150,000 and the city matched that and we were able to do that project. And we just met with Michelle Pereira, who's the director of the library services, and identified another project that the endowment and our fundraising efforts will help to fund, and that's the uh, Donald Wright or Auditorium, mm -hmm. um, which needs some renovations. It was last renovated in the 80s. Mm -hmm. as part of uh, the original project that, right. that we worked on. Right. Um, and so our money is a, is a valuable supplement to um, you know, limited city resources. Yeah. So they'll put some money in and we will put, a, uh, we've committed $125,000 to that project. Mm -hmm. um, That's great. So, at, because you know, we really value the rich architecture and, and um, that makes Pasadena so beautiful and want yeah, to maintain it. That's true. I, I have to I have to acknowledge this is just a side note, but um, the, the the loss of the uh, California Museum, the Museum of California right. Art, yes. uh, Bob Altman is a board member here at Pasadena Media and I know he's put heart and soul and yeah. money into that right. and uh, and we're very sad that, that go, that's, that's gone away. I don't think there's much that the uh, city or the broader community can do about it but again it just shows how vulnerable uh, arts institutions are and yes. and uh, you know the, the the architecture of our city our heritage these are things that really we have to preserve and and it and it means uh, it's it's expensive and yes, you need a right. commitment so yeah and you know that's why I think, despite tax reform, we hope people will be continue to gener to be generous um, because these organizations do need support. They do, um, and there's just no way to do what they do on uh, on government funding and on you know fee for service. There's just additional. That's right. I know, I know that the uh, that the the admission for the museum or for a theater only goes a, a short way right. to the. Uh, now, oh, well, let me talk to you about the environment, too. Uh, I know that we really value, uh, it's funny because when, when uh, I moved here uh, many years ago from the East Coast, I thought, well, Pasadena is sort of the most uh, verdant and reminded me most of the East Coast uh -huh. with the trees yeah. and the older architecture and all that. And that's something we, that we really value that other communities in South in uh, Southern California don't necessarily enjoy. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know that part of your charter is to uh, preserve our, our our city's environment yeah. and, and open spaces and trees and things like so that. So our this most recent grant cycle, we made two uh, $25,000 grants to environmental organizations. One was to the Arroyos and Foothills Conservancy, mm -hmm. whose mission is to um, look for opportunities to purchase uh, open space and preserve it, and really preserve the wildlife corridor so that the animals can um, can move from sort of ecosystem to ecosystem and mm -hmm. not just have inbreeding or, or um, uh, you know, and die off, that they need that mobility of the wildlife corridor. So right. they're very strategic in uh, how they identify properties to purchase and preserve so that that wildlife corridor is, is mm -hmm. preserved. Mm -hmm. And then the other grant that we made was interesting because, you know, just when I think I know every nonprofit in town, yeah. it's always fun to discover a new one. Yeah. And there's an organization called Amigos de los Rios mm -hmm. that had been working primarily in sort of the Whittio Narrows area, but they're headquartered in Altadena. And they came to us um, to fund a tree project in Altadena, so to uh, plant trees and, and enhance the urban forest of Altadena mm -hmm. in some areas that were sort of under planted, if you will. Yeah. And so we, we funded that project as well. That's great. The, um, you know, it occurred to me we've talked a lot about individual giving, but what about corporate uh, giving? Do you, are you in, uh, are, are, do you participate in that, or how does that work? Um, Primarily, uh, the corporate business local community has been uh, sponsors of events that we've had, mm -hmm. so they've sort of supported us in that way. Mm -hmm. But we did have a really interesting collaboration last year with Alibaba Pictures, yeah. which is a new or you know that. relatively yeah. new to Pasadena. Um, their headquarters of the film division is in Pasadena, and I approached the president Wei Zong, um, who's really become a, f a friend. Um, 
about, you know, what are you going to do philanthropically in Pasadena oh. now that you're here? Because that's, you know, what you do when you're in Pasadena. And uh, anyway, long story short, um, we decided to work together to help uh, local nonprofits tell their stories better. And Alibaba recruited uh, student filmmakers, and we actually together collectively produced nine short films um, for nine nonprofits in the Pasadena area. Um, and showcasing a variety of, of you know, human services, environment, yeah. education, arts, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. And those films were produced and shown at sort of a gala type event. Mm -hmm. um, and we had some indus local industry directors and producers judge the films. Yeah. And um, so that was very exciting. The Flint Ridge Center, which has a really wonderful program, um, helping people coming out of incarceration to get uh, jobs in the construction trade. They right. have a training program. Right. Their film won first place. And, um, <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, so it was a really ex exciting project. Well, yeah, project. a little, little plug for where we are now, Pasadena Media. Um, this is uh, the Community Access uh, Facility Corporation, and it's open for all. So what one of the things that we're, we're doing is encouraging nonprofit organizations and others to use the studio to create video content which is so important now for social media right. and all these right. other areas to get the message out uh, and a lot of the nonprofits don't necessarily have the facilities or the bandwidth to produce professional level right. uh, video no, content that can that can their message out so uh, that's one thing that, uh, that that we're working very hard on so uh, in terms of the, uh, the the overall picture now of the um, Community Foundation. What are some? Of, we've talked about a lot of the great things that you do, mm -hmm. but what are some of the challenges that you have? Sure. Um, I mean, I think the challenges that we face. I mean, one is that, you know, we have an increasingly diverse community, and we need to learn as an organization how to reach out to that changing. Uh, group of we need to become more culturally literate about how different cultures view philanthropy, how they want to execute their own kind of philanthropy. And so, you know, we're working on that. And I think the collaboration with with Alibaba was sort of an entree into the world of Chinese philanthropy yeah. and we learned a lot from each other um, right. in that process. And I right. think I think more of that as as the diversity of the community increases, right. you know, we need to uh, work with these uh, different well, we have a large Latino community. community as you know and I think that's a, that's another challenge um, not just from the uh, nonprofits who are looking for grants to help the community but also f from a philanthropic point of view too um, and engaging some of those newer younger communities um, in leadership roles mm -hmm. you know through through committee and board service right. and sort of you know, developing relationships. I think the other challenge is Pasadena has been a place where, you know, it's not uncommon to see three generations of people living, right? You, right. There's all kinds of families in town where right. the grandparents are here and, you know, the kids are raising their kids here. Yeah. Um, and, you know, with the price of housing, um, I think affordable housing is a unique challenge um, mm -hmm. that you know, it's sad to think that our kids can't come back and yeah. live here if right. they can't afford to. Right. And so I think that's a challenge for all of us, is how do we keep that sense of um, intergenerational yeah. community in, in, in Pasadena? It's yeah, I, you know, you, you, bring, you bring up the issue of young people and uh, uh, participation in the community, uh, but I, I often hear, and I think it's true, that if younger people can begin to participate in philanthropy early on, then, uh, I mean, I'm very encouraged by the fact that with a small amount of money, you could actually set up a foundation. Yeah. But, but w what are you doing in terms of, um, of, of younger people as, as future donors or future uh, community participants and things like that? Because that's another diverse population to, to do, to outreach to. Yeah, well I think, I think some organizations do a better job than we do, to be honest, so I'm, I'm looking to them to, um, sure. but I think, um, just speaking from my own sort of personal experience of having, you know, two millennials, um, yeah. uh, you know, I think younger people, they have different, they give differently, and the, um, I know that my daughter, you know, she loves to do like 
soul cycle rides for a charitable yeah. cause. Yeah. You know, they like to be active. They like to, it, there's a social component yeah. to it. Um, and so I think looking for ways to engage them where they are, what they like to do, and yeah. in ways that um, right. work for them right. to, to give them that experience. And I, then I think, you know, having a place on your, you know, boards or committees to sort of train people mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. Um, you know, most people that are, you know, want experienced board members, but you only get that experience if you That's are right. given the experience. That's right. So I think That's having right. sort of a little room for, for yeah. the training. I mean, it's ground. tough for the millennials because their lives are very busy and uh, it's hard and, they, and they're struggling often financially. Yeah. But uh, what about the other thing I was curious about was the, um, when you give grants, there's always going to be a certain amount of controversy, I imagine, in some of the grants that you give. Why did you give to them? Or what about that? Or what about that? How do you handle that? Because I know you want, you want to be uh, uh, objective and, and fairly neutral, but do, have you run across situations like that? Um, you know, there are some organizations, I don't really want to name names, but sure. they, they have been more controversial than mm -hmm. others. Yeah. Um, probably only twice in my 15 years have I gotten a nasty note oh, okay. about why did you support that particular organization. Right. Right. Honestly, I just throw that in the trash and move on. Yeah. Um, I think the good thing is that although we don't say yes every year mm -hmm. or every time to mm -hmm. every grant, we have been here for 65 years. Yeah. There's probably, it would be hard to find a community-based organization that we haven't supported right. at one time. Right. So, right. Um, so that feels good. The other thing I think you're doing is you're fostering change, in a sense. And change always brings, if you, you break a few eggs when you foster change. Yeah. And I, I, think that's, I, I think that's really, an, it's important to do that, uh, as well as support established, but also up and coming and people who are doing things that are innovative and, and maybe, maybe uh, uh, upsetting some of the, the established. Well, we have group. funded organizations um, who then and then withdrawn our funding for a period of years and uh -huh. given them feedback that says, you know, you really, um, you know, it, it appears that you need to do work on these areas. Yeah. And when you make progress, come back to us. Yeah. And, yeah. and many of them have and do, and we've funded them again. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, Jennifer, it's just been delightful to, uh, I, I hope you've enjoyed this, and I, and I hope you've enjoyed your 15 years of service yes, to the indeed, com Pasadena much, community, yes. because I know it's appreciated. I, I, I hear your name so often all over town about the great things that you're doing and, uh, and your leadership. So, well, so I do want to thank you yeah, for that. I appreciate the opportunity to talk about it. It's a great honor to lead this organization. And Great. Yeah, well, thank you again so much for being with us. Thank you. And come back soon. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Jennifer. Great.